Hello guys and welcome to another tutorial. So today I'm going to show you real quick how to model a two-part piston and we're going to add a four bone rig to it and add two very basic constraints. And I'll even show you quickly how to just do a little test animation. I will be making this guy available on my Patreon and that's going to be in the description below. Um, but yeah, it's not too complicated. There is a little bit of a bug going on here that I'll explain in the tutorial. It's not too big of a deal, doesn't hurt things too much, but it is something I didn't notice in earlier versions of Blender and I am using Blender 2.83 and that's where I'm getting the bug. So not sure what that's about, but anyway, I hope you guys are able to learn something from this and implement it into your Blender workflow. Maybe use it in some projects. And um, um, if you guys make anything cool of it, show me on Instagram. That'll also be in the description below. You can follow me there. I like seeing what you guys make. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. Like and subscribe as well. I love you guys. Okay, so go ahead and open up a new scene in Blender. And what we're gonna do is just delete all of the default objects in the scene. And we're simply gonna go shift A, we're gonna go to our mesh options and add in a cylinder. Hit one on your number pad to go into your front orthographic view. And with the cylinder selected, you're gonna go R90 in your front orthographic view. Or just, if you're not on your front orthographic view, you can just go R, Y, 9, 0. But as long as we've rotated 90 degree on the Y, this should be fine. We're then gonna tab into edit mode. And we're just gonna go to wireframe. We're gonna select these vertices over here. And we're gonna go G, X, and we're gonna hold in control. And we're gonna keep snapping it on the grid. So we're gonna snap it twice, three times, four times, five, six, seven, eight, and nine times. Okay, so now we have a cylinder that looks like this. And then we're gonna grab this loop of vertices here, we go G, X, holding control, and just snap it over here. So now we have the length of our um, cylinder here. What we're gonna do is go into face select mode and make sure this face here is selected. Go Shift D, R, X, 9, 0, and hit Enter. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go um, into our left orthographic view by hitting Control and Free on a number pad. Then we're gonna go E, Y, and we're gonna hold the control and extrude it over to here and we're going to grab this guy here go back into your left orthographic view go e y holding control and snap it over here so just here we have another cylinder here i'm going to come over here and make the transform here um, uh, make the pivot uh, the transform pivot active or not active individual origin so go ahead and make that individual origins select this face here holding and shift select this face here then we're going to go i to inset it and then we're going to hit e to extrude it in and that should happen to both of them at the same time if you have enabled individual origins. We're then just gonna set this back to median point. I'm gonna come over here to the end. We're gonna select this face, go I to inset it about this much and then E to extrude it in, X and delete that face. Then we're gonna to go to our edge select and shift alt, click this edge here to select it. Then go shift D X, move it forward to about here. Then go E X and extrude it out. So we're gonna bring this guy. Um, so go into your front of graphic view, go G, X, hold in control. I'm gonna bring it out to about here. You don't even have to hold in control, just as long as it's roughly the length of the inside of the cylinder here. That should be fine. And if this edge is still selected, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go um, Shift D, R, 9, 0, and hit Enter. And then we're gonna go E, Y, and extrude it over this way. Go to your top of graphic view by hitting seven. G, Y, just move it out here a bit till it's on this um, line here. I'm gonna hit F to fill in that face. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Just select this, go back to the top of the graphic view, go E, Y, holding control and just snap it over here on the grid. You can see, um, just look at the grid here for reference. You can see what I'm doing. Hit F to fill that in. And once again, we're gonna go over here, make this individual origins. Make sure we go to face select, both of these faces, select them. Then you hit I to inset it, and then E to extrude. And we'll extrude this one out this time like that. Tab out of edit mode, and now we have this guy modeled. So we're gonna go and go Control A, just make sure to apply the scale, just in case. Then we're gonna go over here, click on a modifier. So we're gonna give this guy a bevel modifier. We're gonna make the limit method here angle, and we're gonna bring down the offset size here. Then we're gonna increase the segment count to three. We're gonna go to object and enable shade smooth. So now we have this nice soft edge here and it doesn't look so sharp. Once we've done that, just tab back into edit mode and just select this a face over here and a face on this guy holding in shift. If you go control L, it's gonna select all of that geometry. We're gonna hit P and we're gonna separate by selection. So this is now its own object, so tab out of edit mode. So now we've got an object here and an object here. And make sure you select both of them, go um, and hit F3. We're gonna type in set origin 
click on set origin and we're going to make it origin to geometry. So now both of them have their own origin point um, defined over here. And now we can simply get into our rigging here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go shift A, we're going to go down to our armature and real simply just add in a single bone. And what we can do is just tab into edit mode here. You can see there is a single bone. So we can either scale this guy down, which we might do. So just scale it. Um, in fact, come over here, make this um, 3D cursor and just scale this guy down about this much, okay? And um, you can go control A and apply to scale, but that'll mess the bevel modifier up and we will have to resettle this. So I'm just gonna leave it. And what we're gonna do is select this bone over here and we're gonna tab into edit mode. Okay, so now we're now in edit mode of this bone over here. And while we're still over here in the 3D cursor for the pivot transform, we're gonna select this bone here and go Shift D R 90 in a front orthographic view. Oops. Okay, so just Shift D and then R 90 in a front orthographic view to duplicate this guy. And what we're gonna do is with this guy selected, we're gonna hold in Shift and select this guy. We're gonna go Control P and we're gonna go Keep Offset. So now this guy is parented to this guy. Then what we're gonna do is we're going to select both of these and we're going to go um okay not both of them just this guy over here go shift d x and move it over here now we're going to move this guy so go g x and move it so it's as close as possible to the middle of this guy over here okay so just make sure it's right in the middle of the circle and then what we're going to do is we're going to select this knob at the bottom we're gonna go Shift S and we're gonna go um, Cursor to Selected. So now our cursor is in the center here. Select this bone and we still have our 3D cursor pivot enabled. We're gonna go Shift D, R, negative nine zero in a front orthographic view. So now this guy is pointing towards here. With this guy still selected, hold in Shift and select this bone over here. Go Control P and we're gonna go Make Parent and keep the offset. So now this guy is parented to this guy. So now is the easy part. So we're gonna simply go into our pose mode. Make sure to set this back to median point over here, the pivot transform back to median point. And now we're just gonna set up some very basic constraints. So what we're gonna do is select this guy here, holding and shift select this guy. Then we're gonna go control shift and C. And I think that might be command shift C for Mac users. So control shift C, and then we're gonna come here to um, track two. Then we're gonna select this guy first, holding and shift select the other guy now, so it's an inverse, um, control shift C again, and we're gonna go track two once again. So now if we grab this guy here, and we go to move it, you can see that guy's pointing. And if we move this guy here, for some reason there's a bit of a bug, but if we tab in and out of edit mode, it just fixes it. So if we grab this guy here, we go G, we move it, you can see that guy is pointing towards it. So this is what we want. So now we have a very simple piston setup. Like, like I said, for some reason in the newer version of Blender, it's creating this bug where this guy, once you set it back sometimes, it doesn't, this guy isn't set back for some reason. So if you just tab in and out of edit mode, it fixes it. Um, so I don't know why it has that bug, but anyway, so we're gonna go back into object mode. I'm gonna select this guy over here, holding in shift, we're gonna select a rig. And then we're gonna go into pose mode and we're gonna select this bone over here, go control P, and we're gonna go set parent to bone, to object mode. I'm gonna select this guy over here, holding in shift select the rig. Then we're gonna go down here into pose mode and then this time select this guy. Go control P and set parent to bone down here. So go back into object mode, just deselect everything. And now if we select our rig and we go to pose mode, we not only have our piston here, but we can now move this guy around and this guy around and we have a piston. So obviously you have to be careful not to go through that, but just, you know, you get something you could add some keyframes to and animate and it looks really cool. So just, if you want to set everything back to where it was, and obviously I just want to point something out. There are some limitations. So if we came to the top here and we moved this guy here um, and then we did it, it's, you know, it has a tendency, it does have some limitations. So you might get some issues there, but just, you know, it's, it's for just a basic kind of um, rig. It's piston rig is really simple to use. So if you want to reset everything, just hit A to select all of the bones, hit F3, and just type in clear pose transforms and it'll set everything back to where it was. Once again, you might get this bug here, just tab in out of edit mode and that should fix the bug that we have in Blender. So let's quickly give this guy just some placeholder materials here. So just cause it looks nice, I'm just gonna select this guy here, hit new, come down here, go to viewport display and I'm just gonna make this guy kind of like an orange in the viewport display. 
and then grab this guy here, give it a new material, go down to the viewport display, make it metallic down here under the viewport display settings. And maybe I'll add that same metal material to these guys here. And this guy here, just because it looks aesthetically pleasing, give it that same material. So here, here we have a rigged piston and blender. This is by no means the most advanced or the best kind of rig. It's just a rig that you could use. And like I said, for some reason, this has some bugs. So I'll quickly, um, like, like I said before, if you tab in uh, out of edit mode, it'll fix that issue. But if we wanted to animate this, we could simply just go to pose mode and just come over here into your timeline. And let's just come to frame one. And in frame one, we're gonna hit all of these bones by selecting A. Just hit A, it's going to select all the bones. Go I, we're going to insert a location and rotation keyframe for all the bones. Come over to frame 50, and on frame 50, we'll grab this guy here, go G, move it up to here, and maybe move this guy up to here. A, just select everything, and then I, location and rotation key. And maybe we'll come to frame 90, and on frame 90, we'll grab this guy, bring it down to here, and bring this, grab this guy here, bring it up to here. A, just select everything, and I, location rotation let's set the end frame here to 100 and now let's go back into object mode and let's go to our first frame and let's see what that looks like and you can also grab your rig here hit m and go new collection and just go okay now you have a new collection here you can just untick this if you want to hide the rig but here we have it so this is how you model and rig a piston and blender like i said this is obviously um not the, the the most advanced way but it is a way i hope you guys have enjoyed this i'll be making this um available on my patreon this little model here and this little setup if you guys want it and um so for the, just check me out in the description below i have all the information about patreon and if you guys want to check me out on instagram you can go ahead and do that as well and subscribe and like if you found this useful